Hello there folks, my name is Robin Nichols and today I'm going to show you all about using the Paint Bucket Tool. Now I think the Paint Bucket Tool is actually pretty good, very very handy, but I suspect it gets overlooked by an awful lot of teachers, awful lot of programs, an awful lot of manuals. They kind of skip it and say, well the Paint Bucket Tool just throws a bit of paint onto the canvas, that's it, and you think, okay, fine. You try it a couple of times and it doesn't work, and therefore you think, well I'll do something a little bit more interesting like retouching, something of that nature. So let me show you how it works. I'm going to choose a colour, and we're going to have a nice little sort of a sepia, brownish, orangish kind of mix colour. I kind of like this sort of rich orangey colour like that. And I'm just using the colour picker. I'll click OK, and you can now see the foreground colour is now replaced, replaced the black, and now we've got this lovely sort of ochreish orange. English language is wonderful, isn't it? You can carry on all day describing the colour with all sorts of fancy words, but that's what we're looking at. So I've chosen the paint bucket tool. We're going to have 100% opacity and the tolerance is set to 255. Okay, are we all sitting down? I just move the cursor over the image, click it once, wallop. So it's a little bit like walking through your living room with a five gallon can of interior wall paint and you trip over, bang, it goes everywhere. Wall paint is notoriously thick, sticky stuff, it's totally opaque and somebody's gonna get very upset. So we need to modify the tool and I suspect this is where the problem arises. You click it and you go, yeah, okay, that's not exactly what I wanted. Um, so we can bring the opacity down. So the opacity is a little bit like adding, let's say, 50% water to the mix. Okay, so we've watered the paint down. Let's try it again. Aha, so now you begin to see where we're coming from. That's looking a little bit better. Let's undo that and bring the mix down to something around, let's say, 20%. Click it again. Wow, okay, so I think that's really nice. It works especially well because I'm using a very contrasty black and white image. If this was a very subtle, smooth, a lot of grey tones in the picture, it probably wouldn't work quite so well. But because this is what I call a gutsy black and white, very dark shadows, nice white, bright, punchy highlights, the paint bucket tool dumps some really nice colour in there. And even if we set it down to about, let's say, 10%, look at this, bang, it's like a warm tone print. So I haven't actually turned it sepia, I've just tinted it a smidge. A smidge, by the way, is like a very small amount. Let's try 5%, there we go, bang. But if I think, hmm, that's sort of okay, but let's go a little bit more, click it a second time, we're up to 10%. A third time, hmm, probably 15%. So you can do it incrementally if you want to. Let's have a look at a different color. We could just choose yellow, for example. And let's see what 5% yellow looks like. Bang. Similar, but it's just a bit of a, a lighter, lemony flavor to it. So it's a really nice way to do it. You keep the opacity down. You mix a lot of water with your paint. Another way of doing this, and as you can see, if I click multiple times, what happens is the highlights are reasonably good, but the shadows begin to look, or the blacks in there, the shadows begin to look a little bit sort of grayish or misty. And that's because we're kind of putting an opaque or a semi-opaque paint layer into the dark shadows. So eventually I think, no, no, that's, that's more like a sort of, you know, it doesn't look quite right. I need to have my blacks back in my picture. I can, of course, sort of fix it up by, you know, ramping them up using levels and bringing the blacks back to a superb, very, very black sort of effect. But I prefer, let's just cancel out of that, I prefer to make another adjustment, and I think this is going to make it look really good. Let's just go back to pretty much to zero. We've got no paint. But what we're going to do now is we're going to change the blend mode. Woo, they say. What's the blend mode, Robin? Well, the blend mode is, is essentially how the pixels in the paintbrush, or in the paint bucket, should I say, react, let's go, react with the pixels underneath. And I'm going to choose, unfortunately, it's just gone off the screen here, one of my favorites. You can either choose overlay, soft light, or hard light. Let's choose soft light. And the reason for changing it from normal to a different blend mode is this. It allows an extra layer of transparency, if you will, to the paint bucket action. I'm going to go back to my favorite kind of orangey brownish color, ochreish. there we go. We've got it set to, this taste, we're going to put it up to like 20%. So you remember the 20% before was pretty good, but it began to make those black areas a little bit opaque-ish. When we do that, it doesn't have any effect at all, or very little. So if you compare the two, this one is far preferable, because this is more like a photographic tint, where it's a chemical process done in a chemical bath, this is talking years ago now, um, compared to just sloshing sort of semi-diluted paint on top of the print. 
So there's no opacity to worry about ourselves. It's almost like translucent completely in the dark areas. The ink shows up nicely. Let's click it a second time. It shows up really nicely in those lighter midtones and the highlights. So I could just be a little bit cheeky and then go and let's choose something that's even redder like this. Let's try that and see what that happens. Wow. So I've now added red on top of the yellowish tint and I'm getting a very robust. This is now almost sepia. So the key to working with this tool is bring the opacity down, i.e. add some water to your paint, bring the mode down from normal down to something like soft light. Let's just try, I'm just going to undo this. Let's just try not soft light, but hard light and see if that works. Not all these blending modes work. Hard light's kind of okay. Let's try overlay blend mode again. So it's not, it's not retrospective. I need to then go back and undo, and I'm just going to try overlay. Overlay is pretty good as well. So it adds a translucency. It's very similar to the process of old when we used to add photo oils and hand color black and white prints. Literally rub the color in. It would take into the midtones and the highlights. It wouldn't really be visible very much at all in the darker shadow. So it's a fantastic process. So this is very, very close to that old fashioned photo tinting process. One more thing before we go, and this is probably key to the whole success is this. We can also move the tolerance. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose again my nice little orangey, ochre colorish -y, there we go, something like that. And I'm going to lower the tolerance because as you see at 255, when I click in the image, it floods essentially 100% of the image with that tint. It's more apparent in the midtones and the highlights than it is in the shadows, but it floods it. If I bring the tolerance down to the default, which is 32, I believe, it's just a number that Adobe somehow plucked out of the sky, it then becomes very sensitive to where I click. So if I click on the brickwork on the left-hand side here, you can see it actually occupies that area in between these drain pipes, but it doesn't bleed any further because it's not, uh, I've got the contiguous, okay, so it only fits pixels that are joining or touching that are the same brightness. If I turn contiguous off and then click in here, you'll see it actually goes in and hits. Let's just do that one more time. It goes in and affects only those pixels of the same brightness. So suddenly it's not only gone into the wall, but it's gone into the ground, the sky, the background, the harbour, everything. So if we've got it set to contiguous, I can click, 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 click. So it's almost like throwing, literally throwing a bucket of paint onto a surface that has a limit or a restriction or a barrier to stop it painting the rest of the building. So this painting technique, again, is this is why I said it's a little bit hit and miss. It can work really well. It can look like a dog's breakfast. And that's a euphemism for something that's not very nice if you ever see my dog eating breakfast. Okay, I'm going to change the color and I'm going to go to, let's say, an even darker brown. And in fact, I think I want a ready brown this time. Let's go for a ready brown and we might just pop it into the door. And you can see it looks sort of semi, oh, it's actually flooded out onto the garage floor. That's looking quite good. Let's just try the door and the siding panel there. Uh, the trick again is to change the colors. Let's go to blue and we'll choose a reasonably light blue and I might just try a click in the sky. Wow, okay, we've got a funny brown tint in the sky there, but it's put also a blue tint into the sky. I'm gonna go back and choose a green tint, something like that, uh, because from memory there was a fair bit of mold in this area. That's a pretty violent green. So I might choose a much darker sort of foresty green and I might say opacity, let's just make it 10% or thereabouts. Now you may find, uh, depending exactly where you see now I've clicked there, it's actually flooded the whole garage floor. Uh, let's turn contiguous off and see what happens. Very good. So you can, in some images, in some instances, build up almost like a hand-painted, beautiful hand-colored image comprising multiple clicks, multiple colors, Let's go back to the sort of reddish color, multiple colors. It really depends on how careful you are in the areas that you select to do your clicking. Let's just click down here, as you can see. Uh, sometimes it has an adverse effect and it floods the entire area. Let's press contiguous again. Let's get up into the roof here and do a little bit of selective clicking. Let's do a bit of clicking in there. You can overclick by that, I mean, add color on top of color. You can see you sometimes get this kind of posterized edges happening here. I'm going to put a little bit of blue, I think, into the barrel there. So if that's going to work, it may just, you know, it's actually flooded out into the area. Uh, you can always bring the tolerance down, which means it's not going to spread very far at all. 
or if you just get tired and bored with it, you may want to change the blend mode and the tolerance. And then it's, see, that's looking pretty cool. It's almost a color picture, but it's not because I've just been throwing buckets of paint into it. How cool is that? I'm just going to put a color wash on the top now, just sort of yellow to warm it up. Maybe something like that. And again, I've got it set so that it just goes wallop, warms it up kind of nicely. How's that? This would take, again, probably another half an hour to get a really good result. You may find areas such as the little area in the sky entrapped by that cable is suddenly gone a funny, gone a very funny colour actually. It's accidentally absorbed some of the horrible old brown. So I may have to go and do a little bit of pixel surgery on that. I've got some weird colours happening in the sky. So you can of course fix this up by using, for example, the clone brush later on, go around and just kind of clone out or heal out some of those mistakes or you know, undo the last 444 mouse clicks and start again. But I would say probably use the clone brush or the healing brushes I'm doing here just to kind of fix up some of those mistakes. There's a bit of posterization happening in the sky, etc., etc. So I need to spend a little bit of time fixing that up. But as you can see here, uh, that's working with the paint bucket tool, providing you get all those settings nicely set up before you start, you can have great fun and indeed create some fantastic looking results.